And so God, it, he met me where I was at. But one of the things that happened because of, of where I, you know, just my f lifestyle and, and, and family issues, you know, a lot of curses, word curses were spoken over me. And then I had my own self-imposed word curses that I spoke over myself. And that's what I have found that has caused the body to stay in a place of defeat. Because we have embraced the whispers, we have embraced the lies of the enemy, and we have exalted his word over what the word of God says. And so we can't move forward unless we get a revelation of the word, unless we meditate on the word. The Lord spoke to me. I had a vision a couple years ago. We were in a prayer meeting, and the angels came in, and they had swords, and they were piercing people's abdomens. And they said, the famine of the word is over. And I'm decreeing to you that the famine of the word is over. God desires for us to walk in a place of breakthrough. And if you don't know what's in the book, how can you walk in freedom? And that's what Linda said. We need to understand that Jesus has so much for us. You know, the enemy has a destiny for you as well as God. And, and, that, and when, at that point when I was listening to him, I was allowing him to dictate how I was moving forward. And that had to stop. So... The, when I started to read and see that, that my mind was not in alignment, and I said to the Lord, I am not living an abundant life. I don't understand what's happening. I'm saved. I have renounced certain things. I, I, I'm applying the blood. What is my problem? And he said to me, you believe the enemy's voice. You're, his voice is louder because you have become one with his lies. You have embraced the lies because that's what's, that, that's what's locked in. That's what's there in you because you believe it. You believe that you'll never amount to anything. You believe that you'll always be stuck. You'll believe that you'll be limited. But see, that's not what the word says, does it? But how many of you, you don't have to raise your hand, have issues with when God starts talking about prosperity, you look at other people, but you don't believe it for yourself. So when I worked for the airlines, I, I needed to transfer out of the, um, air, the department I was in. I was, um, you know, I, I wasn't the greatest employee at the time. And I'd call in sick from Puerto Rico, you know, on the beach, telling them I had a cold. And, you know, I, it, I, was, I just really was rebellious, which wasn't good. And uh, I, needed, I needed to get out of the department. People were partying. And I was just, a, it was not good. So... I knew that it would take a miracle. Now, you have to understand, I'm still pretty young in the Lord, but I grabbed hold of the word. Luke 1 says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. Amen? And I believed it. And I said, Lord, it, I, I don't have anything else to believe in. I know the devil's real, but I'm asking you to help me here. So I applied. I applied for this transfer. But I, have, I was meditating on the word, and even though everything in me was saying, no, this is ridiculous, you'll never get out of this mess, but I was holding on to the word. I said, but Lord, your word says that with you nothing shall be called impossible, and I need breakthrough. God, I said, I'm trusting you. Chuck spoke about a poverty spirit is linked with not trusting God. And I said, Lord, I'm choosing to trust you. Help me with my unbelief. Help me out of this mess. There was such a tug of war. Do you know what I'm talking about? There was this war going on in me. So I applied for the job, and I mean, my supervisor laughed at me. And she said, are you for real? Do you think you'll get it? And inside of it's like, no. But I said, yes. <laughs> I said, yes, I'm trusting God. When I got to the interview, uh, the manager who I met with said to me, why in the world would I hire you? <laughs> and I said, I know. I said, but I'm not that person anymore. And I said to him, listen, if I call in sick, I'll quit. You don't even have to fire me. I said, I promise you, I will be the best employee ever. So he said to me, well, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to give you this job. And so the Lord broke through. Now, the thing that I want to share with you is that God doesn't, you know, I didn't know where every scripture was in the Bible. I chose to believe the truth of the word. I chose to grab hold of it. 
that was something that I had such warfare in my mind. It wasn't easy. Let me put it to you that way. Because I know when I'm ministering to a lot of people, they're, they're not meditating on the word. The word doesn't have final say in our life. The word, that's where we have to shift. The word has to have final say in our life because God is reversing the curses and he's causing a restoration of your fortunes to come. I was the least likely. I was in poverty. I didn't have anything going for me, but God turned my life around. And it was through deliverance of the word. It was meditation of the word. Yes, we prayed. Yes, we broke off curses, but I had to align with the word and I had to believe it. I had to say, above all, when I've done all to stand, I'm going to stand some more because this stinking thing that's in me, this stinking thinking that's trying to take me out, I'm going to take it out. It's not going to destroy me. But in the midst of that, I was crying out to God because then I was afraid. I didn't have this. I didn't have churches that believed. Well, still there might not be a whole lot of churches that believe, but I didn't have a whole lot that was there to encourage. But I saw, I locked myself away in the room because I had no hope. And at that time, until I got hold of the word, I'm telling you, that scripture in Luke 137 said, with God, all things shall be called possible. What's impossible with man, rather, is impossible, I mean, it's possible with God. And I grabbed hold of that and I held on to it because I needed a lot of miracles in my life. My family, they hated um, anything to do with Christ. And they didn't want me to be saved. And I thought, well, I don't really care any longer because what are you doing for me? I said, at least he's, you know, things are turning around in my life. And, and God started to really break through. And my, my portion here that I, I'm going to share a little bit about a slothful sphere, but my portion here is grab hold of the word. Do not allow your self-pity or the rebellion or, you know, uh, the, you know, that you think you're right or blaming others to stay here today. We have to make that shift. We cannot. We have to come with a clean slate. The Bible says in Psalms, who can ascend to the hill of the Lord? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. We have to say to the Lord, Lord, I don't care. I give up my right to be right. And I don't want, I don't want my viewpoint to, to be the thing that's going to hold me back. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says that a fool has no delight in understanding, but only in expressing their opinion. A fool has no delight in moving forward. A fool has no delight in listening. A fool has no delight in, listen, in, in absorbing what you're saying, only in expressing and blaming and saying, yeah, but. And that's what I had to shift out of. I said, Lord, I, I don't care any longer. I will, I'm just submitting to you. I'm going to shut my mouth. Now, I said I'm going to shut my mouth, but see, that's what the Lord wants us. He wants us to stay in defeat and bondage, keep our mouth shut, and not release the word of the Lord. Today, the Lord is giving us our voice back because we're walking in the freedom of the Lord. We are not aligning with lies. I don't care how small, how big it is. We're not aligning with that lie that says, you can't decree that word. You can't shift things with your prayers. You can't change your cities. You can't change your nations. That's what the enemy wants us to believe. See, we have to clean out the cobwebs and we have to clean out the stuff that has kept us on lockdown because God is breaking the limitations off of us.